Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your time. Let me open by saying I would like to thank uh, the, the community of Fort Bend County uh, for their cooperation during this weather event. Our main concern is and will always be public and first responder safety. The overnight rainfall resulted in minor flooding in some areas, but the good news is that the county and local jurisdictions uh, report minimal impact to the communities. The Fort Bend County Emergency Operations Center is activated at level two, which is increased readiness. This means that county will be continue to monitor the weather situation and status of Brazos River. I, at this point, I would like to introduce different department heads, and I wanted to bring up Mark Flathouse, emergency coordinator, for an update from his end. Mark? Mark Flathouse, emergency management coordinator. Over the last 24 hours, we were here in the emergency operations center to make sure that we had great communications with our jurisdictions. We were doing two things. We were watching the, the rain event that took place last night, along with also looking at the river levels for our citizens and jurisdictions. Over the next 48 hours, we'll maintain the emergency operations centers and maintain communications with our jurisdictions. And as we go through the uh, weather events tonight and into the weekend, we're gonna be watching the river and turn it into a river watch event to make sure that the flow of the river and maintaining the levels impacts any of our jurisdictions that we're here for them. And with that, uh, as we go through the weekend for the jurisdictions, for the citizens and everybody, we're here to help. And any communications, please go to our website or our social media, and we'll be here to answer any questions or help the citizens of Fort Bend County. Thank you, Mark. Uh, with that, next I will, uh, will bring up Mark Grant to provide a road and bridge update. Mark. Hello, everyone. I'm Mark Grant, Road Commissioner. Uh, in this capacity, I'll be talking about debris management. We will start our debris removal starting on uh, May 20th. There will be no debris picked up until that date. Debris will only be removed from properties affected during the rain and flood event. Debris will not be picked up off of private streets or gated communities. Debris should be placed in the right-of-way according to separating of the debris in the categories by the flyer that will be provided or the video that it will be on Homeland Security slash emergency management website. There will be the first pass will start. We will let everyone know when the second pass will start, and then we will let everyone know when the third pass will start. There will only be three passes for debris pickup, three only. I thank you. Thank you, Mark. Next, I will, uh, um, I will ask Mark Vogler to provide a drainage and watershed update, Mark. And we have a lot of Marks here. Thank you. I'm going to give you an update on our streams and the river in the Barker Reservoir. We saw two to five inches of rainfall countywide in the overnight hours. This rainfall caused additional rises on our local creeks and bios, but conditions are manageable. The Brazos River at Richmond has risen around a foot over the last 24 hours and is currently at stage 48.2 feet above the gauge elevation. The latest river forecast shows little rise but the river will remain in an elevated condition well into the next week. The Brazos River at Rocheron has risen into a major flood stage at 51.3 feet. Similar to Richmond, the flood shows little additional rise, but elevation, elevated conditions will last for the foreseeable future. We are closely monitoring the San Bernard River on our western boundary, particularly at the south end of the county. The current flood forecast calls for a rise into a major flood stage later today, so we will be alerting our residents that live in those areas. Barker Reservoir watershed also received significant rainfall overnight. The current U.S. Army Corps of Engineers forecast calls for peak elevation of approximately 90 feet above sea level on May 17th, which will be fully contained within the reservoir. 
The National Weather Service forecast showing the potential for additional heavy rainfall tonight will continue to monitor rainfall totals and coordinate our response to flood events with our local <coughs> jurisdictions into the weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. And next we have Anna Gonzalez from Social Services to provide an update. Anna. Buenas tardes. Yo soy Ana González. Soy la directora de el Departamento de Servicios Sociales del Condado de Fort Bend. Uh, estamos aquí para ayudarles. Si necesitan ayuda, por favor, hablen al, hablen al 211 o también pueden hablarle al, al Departamento de Servicios Sociales, 281-342-7300. También pueden buscarnos en la página de Facebook del Servicios Sociales de, uh, del Condado de Fort Bend. Sigan visitando um, la página de Facebook del Condado de Fort Bend OEM. Muchas gracias. Good afternoon. My name is Anna Gonzalez. I am the director of Fort Bend County Social Services, and we are here to help you. Please call a 211 if you're needing assistance. You can always call social services at 281-342-7300. Um, you can also look for us on our Facebook page, Fort Bend County Social Services, for more information. But please continue to follow the Fort Bend County OEM Facebook page as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. In closing, I would say I would encourage publics to stay informed on local road conditions and to monitor the weather for possibility of localized flash flooding. Please check the road and weather conditions before you're leaving home. And my message to my community is that we are constantly monitoring the situation. I will continue working closely with all local jurisdiction and communities to make sure whatever we can do to make our residents' lives safe. Everyone should take a second and text FBC alert 888-777 to get emergency alert. Please continue to monitor FBC OEM social media channels and www.fbcoem.org and to stay updated. Thank you and stay safe. And I tell you, the media members here, and I greatly appreciate that you are setting this information out there. I'm getting a lot of feedback from the community saying that, oh, I, I heard this from this channel or that channel. And so thank you for being here, and thank you for your service to this community. With that, we will open up for any questions. Can you tell us you might more have. about the San Bernard view? You were saying that that's, that's the one that you were most concerned about right now. Mark, come forward. Vogler, V-O-G-L-E-R. And the San Bernard, according to the latest forecast, was about a 10-foot rise over what we were seeing this morning. I think. I can speak. My name is Jeff Janacek. I'm an assistant engineer under Mr. Vogler. I can speak a little bit about the San Bernard. So specifically in bowling, uh, what we saw was about a 5-foot rise through the day yesterday. We're currently at 30.72 feet. The current forecast shows an additional eight foot of rise in uh, the next 24 hours. The river's rising about one foot every two hours. Uh, specifically down in that area, we have a community called Tierra Grande. And we were communicating with the residents down there and in the lower end of the county near Needville, um, making sure they're aware of the conditions to come. How many people are going down there? If I had to estimate, I'd say a few thousand. more ranch land there's a potential at 38 feet that we could get to some homes uh, particularly in the Tierra Grande area it'd be similar to the tax day flood as far as the Brazos River if I, I just want to make sure I understand correctly you said um, it has risen you expect it to stay high but not get much higher correct we rose about a foot overnight and the current forecast shows little additional rise but only a drop of about two feet you know over the next five days yesterday you guys had uh, more than Anybody? Currently, there's 150 homes, approximately 150 homes in the unincorporated areas. The numbers are going to accelerate with the jurisdictions. We know, 
I don't want to speak right now on the numbers because they're still compiling some of those numbers. Um, I know that Needville has a number of homes that was impacted um, and we're still working on if Rosenberg had some uh, some homes that was impacted. Um, so I, I don't want to speak on the number other than that we know that there's approximately 150 homes in the unincorporated area at this point. And when you say Needville was impacted, was that from last night or is that from? No, that was from Tuesday night. Um, Jeff, please. Sure. When we look upstream, again, we look at Hempstead. Hempstead has dropped six feet uh, over the last three days, and so in that regard, we're seeing an improvement. We're also monitoring an orchard, which is in Fort Bend County, and we've seen two-tenths of a foot of drop in orchard. So the flood wave is making its way down. We feel confident in the forecast at Richmond in the days to come. Can you spell your last name again? Yes, J-A-N-E-C. E K. Thank you. So, are, is it the Brazos River? I know yesterday that was a major concern. Is that still a major concern, or? It's still a major concern because it's still at moderate flood stage. But we do feel confident that there will be little additional rise, which is a very good thing. When it comes to communities like the Sienna Plantation, there's images that some of the like the sports complexes were flooded. Any word as to damage in that area? <laughs> We haven't heard anything specific on the sports complex in Siena. Uh, we know that that area is outside of the levied area, and they did have similar issues in previous floods, and so at this stage, it's to be expected. Have you guys had any high water rescues? Anybody want to? In the last 24 hours, uh, there have been about four or five different small rescues uh, later in the evening hours. Besides that, there have not been any major rescues because of the weather that hit last night. Uh, a lot of the first responders were prepared, and we're still prepared tonight uh, with all the jurisdictions. Um, but uh, we had a majority of the rescues uh, Tuesday night. Can you all talk about the other damage that uh, residents in Fort Bend County experienced last night? Um, it sounds like hail was also a big issue. So is that, uh, can you please explain that? Over the evening hours, we did. We had some reports of uh, some small hail. Um, I know that uh, the county, North Harris County, had some more reports, but up in the Katy area that we had some reports of that. Uh, we didn't have any significant damages reported to us from those jurisdictions. We also had some high winds and some lightnings and stuff, and we had some uh, potential hits on some small houses uh, in the areas, but no sub substantial damages from last night reported to us this morning. We took time this morning to reach out and work with the jurisdictions along <laughs> with uh, sending some of uh, county employees out to make sure we did damage assessments, and there wasn't a whole lot that came back from it. Were there any power outages reported from the Fort Bend County area? There were slight power outages. We had some this morning, uh, but as of right now, I don't know of any current ones that are still out. Any uh, um, major road closures anywhere? Are you anticipating any major arteries that need to be closed down? So at the moment, <clears throat> um, our observation shows no major road closures. There's only small, maybe minor roads, maybe here and there, but nothing major, nothing major. Um, actually, we, we haven't been as busy as we thought we were going to be, so that's a good thing. Um, but we have been working with a lot of our partners, which is a lot of nonprofit organizations throughout Fort Bend County, to assist us with the needs that um, the residents have been requesting. And if there's any residents that are in need, could you just kind of list some of those resources? Um, some of the organizations that are ready to serve is Second Mile, which is on the east end of Fort Bend County. Um, also, East Fort Bend Human Needs, east end of the county. Um, here in the Rosenberg-Richmond area, it'd be uh, Richmond, Rosenberg-Richmond Helping Hands. Uh, in the Katy area, it's uh, Katy Christian Ministries. And um, throughout Fort Bend County, Attack Poverty is also available. What was that last one? I'm sorry. Any shelters open? At this Attack point? Poverty. No shelters. No shelters at this time. Do you anticipate that? 
say yeah. because of what you are Yeah, saying. obviously uh, Red Cross is standby and uh, if in case we need it, we are ready to do that. But at this point, there is no need. And also one we opened closed down because, you know, there was no, no demand or not enough people there. So that's the situation. I know. I, I I just wanted to clarify also. Mark Grant said about you know because we still don't have access to all the damages in Fort Bend County because, uh, you know, cities manages their own um, way of emergency management. So we don't. We are willing to support. We are willing to help them. We are going to stand by um, and let us know what kind of need they have. All this discussion is about um, you know the unincorporated area where. County provides service, and so I just wanted to clarify that. And when it comes for those provisions on the Saint Bernard, you mentioned, I believe, here at Grande, um, any evacuation orders, knowing that it's going to rise eight more feet in the next day? At the moment, no. But the thing about it is, like we always say, we are constantly monitoring the situation. If it is needed, we will, we will address that issue at that time. In terms of school closures, is it safe to say that uh, schools will reopen on Monday, or we just have to? It is, it is absolutely, we don't know what is going to happen tonight, but it looked like, again, I am assuming or I'm, I'm hoping there won't be any more closure. And with that, I think if you have, a, yes, sir. I don't want to make any comparison, and I we here. I think last few days we have been relentlessly out there, and we have been 24/7 communicating with the with the public, and we are hearing a lot of positive feedback from what we are doing. And so there is, we don't want to com compare anything. And of course, in the past also we did whatever the best we can, and we kn we learn from every event, and so we are trying to do the best we can to communicate with our citizens. We will continue to do that, and we are um, we are up to that task at this point. Yeah. A any other questions? So with that, and I will conclude this uh, press conference. And once again, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for being here. And without you, we cannot get this information out. And with your service uh, to the community, and I greatly appreciate it with that. Uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon.